I was attracted to Rolla because, number one, it gave me an opportunity to continue working in computing. Now, you understand, in graduate school, I had a total of two courses in computing, and that was all that the university offered because that was about all they knew to offer at that time. And so by coming to Rolla, I had an opportunity to do the psychology that I had studied and pursue computing. And being from psychology wasn't that unusual because there were no computer science faculty at that time, 1960s. So the early department here at Rolla was made up of one mechanical engineer, two statisticians, three mathematicians, one electrical engineer, and one from psychology. And that would pretty common across the country. The professor chairman of physics fought adamantly against the creation of a computer science department. His famous statement was, majoring in computer science is like majoring in slide rule. The way the computer was viewed in the late 60s and early 70s was very different from how we view a computer today. At that time, it was viewed as primarily just a number cruncher. So it was of interest to engineers, it was of interest to statisticians, but it wasn't understood to be an information machine. We got one of the best computers that IBM had available at the time. It was an IBM 36050. It was the size of about seven huge commercial refrigerators all put together. Retailed for a million one and it had a total of 256K. You couldn't even store one of your pictures that you take with your cell phone today in that much memory, but that computer served the entire campus. Understand, no terminals, just punch cards in, paper out. If I had to point to one thing that has changed most dramatically from the 60s to 2015 would be the fact that computers are now in everything. The way the computing has impacted virtually every part of your life has also influenced the way it's taught in the department. You studied Fortran, you studied Assembler, you studied one that you've probably never heard of today, PL1. This was going to be the master language that IBM had designed that was going to replace all other languages. The nature of the classroom has in some ways changed dramatically and in other ways it hasn't because at the heart of it the faculty member wants to give students an understanding of what's really going on below the surface, the parts that a casual user would not care about at all. And so I keep telling students, you can't begin to imagine what you're going to be doing 20 years from now. The only thing that we can count on is that it will be very different. It'll be something you didn't study in school. What you're going to need is the basics so that you can keep moving with the field because it moves so rapidly. I had a student named Jack Dorsey. When he was in my class, he was basically ahead of everybody else as far as his understanding of the material. And so I basically told Jack he could do whatever he wanted to. He continued to come to class continued to do all the homework, and eventually went off and was a co-founder of Twitter. <laughs>